Hi, I'm Lucy Malsby. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Architecture, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm talking a little bit today about a current research project that was funded in part this summer by a research grant from CAMD. So this project really begins where my recent book on interwar Milan concludes. That is, with the collapse of the fascist regime. For many Italians and outside observers, the spontaneous nature and public spectacle of Mussolini's body hanging upside down from the gantry of a gas station served as a visceral means of rejecting more than 20 years of fascist rule and evidence of the end of a discredited regime. However, despite the collapse of the regime, the results of the building camp campaign launched by Mussolini to transform Italians into model fascist citizens and impose fascist values of order and hierarchy onto the Italian landscape remained firmly in place. Scholars, particularly those interested in culture, memory, and identity, have begun to trace the continuities between inter- and post-war Italy. However, remarkably little attention has been devoted to the monuments, buildings, and urban spaces left in the wake of fascism, many of which were in fact completed after the dissolution of the regime. In an effort to trace the post-war legacy of fascism, my research focuses on fascist party headquarters, the building type most intimately associated with fascism, and the institutional network through which Mussolini aimed to alter the character, habits, and attitudes of ordinary Italians in the making of a new Italy. With support from CAMD, I gathered vis visual evidence last summer of these buildings from contemporary books and periodicals paying particular attention to those buildings and spaces designed for the party by recent graduates of the nation's leading architectural schools, many of whom would have successful careers in the post-war period. New buildings designed by younger architects were not, only the feature, were not only a feature of major industrial centers in the north, but also of southern cities, particularly those with cosmopolitan ambitions, like Messina, where Simona's Casa del Fascio was one element of a significantly larger scheme to rede redevelop the waterfront. Even when young architects were not charged with the design of entire buildings, as was the case for the party's headquarters in Milan, they were given the responsibility of designing significant spaces within these buildings. In this instance, a martyrial chapel that would also have a low relief uh, done by Lucio Fontana. One of the fundamental questions thus that this study seeks to address is how and to what extent do the attitudes toward architectural design formed in the final years of the fascist, fascist regime, particularly among young architects associated with the avant-garde, reappear, however cleansed of their political content in the post-war period. A comprehensive understanding of these buildings in the interwar period also provides the basis for tracing the history of these structures in the post-war period. The vast majority of former fascist party headquarters have been repurposed as military and state police headquarters and are a distinctive feature of cities and towns throughout Italy and in Italy's former colonies in North and East Africa. In assessing the post-war history of these buildings, I'm interested in gaining a more nuanced understanding of their relationship between their power of works of art and their power as political statements. What are the consequences of this assessment for their value as objects of scholarly study, as buildings worthy or not of preservation? With the support of a research grant, I also began to follow some of the threads, such as an interest in vernacular traditions, that connect the inter- and post-war periods through the pages of architectural periodicals published in Italy in the decade after the close of the Second World War. The pages of these journals suggest that although architects such as Ernesto Rogers went to great pains to present fascism as a rupture within an otherwise glorious cultural history, fascism's effort to manipulate the landscape of architectural debate and practice was at least partially successful. The next stage of this project will be to delve more deeply into private and state archives with the aim of providing a more frank assessment of fascism's legacy in post-war Italy 
and architecture's role in that history. Thank you.